Mark chapter number 6. We'll begin reading in verse 32. The Bible says, And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as a sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, the disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away, that they may go into the country round about and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. And he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread, and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, Five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they, did not, and they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace and your amazing power and your amazing abilities. Thank you, Lord, for the amazing day when you saved us. Thank you for shedding your blood for our propitiation that our names might be written down in heaven. God, I'm glad that I know that I know that I know that I've been saved. I'm glad for that day you convicted me of sin, and when I called upon you, you saved me and forgave me of all my sins. And Lord, I bless your holy name. Lord, uh, I know I haven't always been what I should have been, but Lord, I'm glad you've always been what you said you'd be, a God of grace. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us today. Lord, it's a beautiful day. I've heard some beautiful singing. But Lord, there seems like there's some folks that their spirit might be down this morning. Their spirit might be heavy this morning. It just seems like a little lull in the sanctuary today. So, Father, we now invite you to come and take up your abode. We ask you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Father, we want to be an encouragement to your people. We want to be a help to them. So, Lord, I pray that, Lord, uh, that one that may be low would uh, get their eyes off of their situation and look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, find strength and find encouragement this morning. I pray for that one that, Lord, is seeking that they would find. I pray for that one that is hungry they'd be filled. Lord, whatever the need is, I pray that you would meet it and or do abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Now, help us use this unworthy vessel. Make the Bible become real to us today. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things this morning. I want you to notice in this text the departing. Look at verse 32. It says, And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. If we had time, we'd have looked at the early part of this chapter, and Jesus had sent his disciples out by two, uh, and they'd went out, and they'd been ministering and witnessing uh, and doing a lot of things. Uh, uh, and when uh, they were called back, and they, they came to Jesus, and they began to rehearse all the things that they'd seen and done, uh, and all that uh, God had done through them, uh, the, the disciples were so taxed uh, that they had not even had time to eat. So Jesus says, come into a desert place. Uh, and can I say, uh, sometimes you better come apart or you will come apart. Jesus knew this, so he decided to give his disciples a break uh, and take them away from it. The only problem is, is the Lord never gets away from it. 
He's a present help in time of trouble. But we find he, even though he goes to depart, uh, and they depart with him, uh, uh, they didn't get much of a reprieve. We see the departing. Now notice the desert place. It said that they departed into a desert place. Nothing like vacation in the desert, huh, Brother Jim? Hmm? Uh, I hate Miss Judy's not here because one of the things she looked forward to most coming back to Kentucky from Phoenix is the green grass. Where everything's green and beautiful because it's not so beautiful in the desert. Huh? The Lord took them to a place that you and I wouldn't think would be much of a blessing. But can I say, wherever he is, it's always a blessing. We see the departing, we see the desert place. Now notice the divide of people in verse 33. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all the cities, and out with them, and came together unto him. That verse right there messes me up. I would to God, Brother Aaron, to live in a day where people would hear that Jesus is doing something, and they would show up before he gets there. Hmm? They'd already heard him teach and already been around him. They say, hey, where's he going? They said, well, he's heading over that way by boat. They said, let's beat him there. They took off a running and beat him there, huh? Most time people drag into church. Boy, it would be a different day if everybody got excited and run and show up before the Lord shows up, huh? I'm not complaining. I know a lot of you drive a long distance, and I appreciate it, and it humbles me. And I every every week I'm asking myself, Lord, why are they coming to hear me preach? Uh, 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 but I, I hope you come to hear the Lord and see something from Him. And, but boy, wouldn't it be good if we just came with excitement in our soul? Now, notice, if you will, the deficiency. Uh, we find in verse 36 there's a deficiency of food. And it says, send them away that they may go into the country round about into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. There's a deficiency of food. Can I say there's a deficiency of faith? Look at verse 37. And he, or he answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. Now they just said, Lord... They have nothing to eat. And Jesus said, looks at them and says, Well, you give them something to eat. Can I say right now that he'd already told them with, if they had faith the size of seed of a grain of mustard seed, they could say to them out and be cast in the sea and be removed. He'd already taught them everything they needed to know. He'd already used them and showed them miracles. And he says, Give ye them to eat. Uh, you'd say, What's going on here, preacher? The Lord would have used them to do the miracle of the bread and the fishes if they'd had the faith. Uh, too many times we're waiting for the Lord to show up when the Lord's saying, why don't you do it? You can't do it without His help, but sometimes it's good just step out there on faith and just let Him show up in the midst of your stepping out. We see there's a lack or a deficiency of food. There's a deficiency of faith. But there's also a deficiency of funds. Look again at verse 37. Give ye them to eat, and they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He, they're saying, We don't have enough money to go get food to give them to eat. There's a deficiency. Food, faith, and funds. I wonder what we're lacking today. As you came to the house of God, what is your deficiency today? What is your need today? Hmm? You say, I have need of nothing. Well, hallelujah. Where's your halo? Hmm? The most spiritual person in this building still has needs. Still lacks. Still has deficiency. We all need more Him. Hmm? Now notice the dubious or the unbelievable. Look at verse 44. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Five loaves and two fishes fed 5,000 men. In the other accounts, you'll find that's not counting women and children that were there. Brother James, it's estimated at least 15,000, maybe as many as 25,000 people were there 
and they all ate and then the little lad that gave his lunch left home with 12 baskets full of bread and fish hmm that's just unbelievable and it lets you know Jesus hmm he could have took the rocks in the desert and turned it into fish it's the Lord it's unbelievable and that's that's the great miracle of this text but I want to look at the other miracle in this text the other miracle that most people don't see uh, look in verse 39 and he commanded them to make all sit down by, company, co by companies upon the read it with me look at verse 32 and they departed into a what place hmm? look at verse 35 and when the day was now far spent his disciples came uh, unto him and said this is a desert place now look again in verse 39 they sat down upon what green grass now I don't know much but I know deserts are dry they're arid can I say this they're destitute you don't go out in the desert and plant uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, crops uh, and expect to harvest. And some deserts get so little water a year that nothing grows there. They're destitute. They're dry. They can be dangerous. There are things that slither in the deserts. You know what I'm saying? The heat's unbelievable in deserts. And yet, in the midst of a desert place, there's green grass. And I don't know about you, but I, I, that may, I think that's a miracle. Uh, can I say something about that grass? Uh, 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 this miracle is fascinating. There's grass there. It's fertile. It's green grass. Brother Jim, you've lived around the desert. Did you ever go out walking in the desert and find a big patch of green grass? That's an eyewitness. But yet does not the Bible say this desert place had green grass? It's fascinating, it's fertile, but it's also a flood of green grass. If there's 5,000 men that we know of in the text and as many as 25,000 people sitting down in the green grass, that's a lot of grass in the desert. Can I say he's always got as much as you need and then some? Can I help you with that? Huh? That's just him. I mean, he knew exactly where to take these fellows to a desert place, uh, but when they get to look, and there's plenty of grass to sit down. Hey, can I say, uh, I'm glad the she shepherd leads the sheep uh, to green pastures. Hallelujah, huh? I want to preach on this little thought. This morning. I want to help you this morning, because I, I, I know some of you came in, you got some deficiencies. You're lacking something. You're lacking some joy. You're lacking some peace. You're lacking some faith. You're lacking some help. I want to be a help to you this morning. I want to preach with God's uh, help on this little thought, how to find grass in your desert place. I'd like to tell you always oh, going to be on the mountaintop, but that's just not true. There's sometimes you, you're just going to get a little dry. Sometimes it's going to look destitute, uh, and sometimes it's dangerous. If you don't get to Jesus, your whole life could get shipwrecked. Mm. I got good news he's got grass for your desert place he can fascinate you in the midst of your desert he can make that fruitless life be fertile uh, in your desert uh, hey I've got news for you he's got plenty for you in your desert uh, so how do we find grass in our desert place well, I find it right here in the text they found grass in their desert place. They said, Preacher, it's been real dry around our house. Well, I'm going to help you this morning. How to find some grass in your desert place. And I say, first of all, you'll find that fertile, flooded grass in your deserts by seeking to meet with Jesus. Look again, verse 33. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. 
You know how they found grass in their desert place? They got out of their misery and got to where he was. Can I say something? Uh, 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 you're never, ever uh, going to get the help you need wallering in your desert. You've got to get to Jesus. Uh, they saw Jesus heading down the road in a ship. Uh, they said, hey, uh, I need to follow him. I need more of what he's got. Uh, i got to get to him. Uh, hey, I've got good news. You're in the right place this morning. Uh, hey, this is his house. Uh, and he's got what you need this morning. Uh, but as long as you're willing to stay in your desert, you'll never get it. Hmm? Uh. Back up there in verse 39, they commanded them to sit down in the desert place. You've got to do what Jesus says to get out of your desert. Find the grass. Hmm? You've got to seek him. hope you came seeking him. There's a popular saying, you usually see it around Christmas time, wise men still seek him. Seek and you shall find. What would you come out to see? Hmm? Jesus asked the crowd that one day. Talk about John the Baptist. said, what did you come out to see? Prophet? He said, a prophet indeed. Ah, uh, what did you come out to see today? Uh, did you come just out of obligation? If you did, you're going to leave as dry as you came in. You know what is a sad indictment for a Christian? That you're drier than cracker juice. You know why Jesus said on the cross, I thirst? so that you and I would never be able to say, I thirst. Because he said, if we got a drink of living water, there'd be water welling up within us, and we'd never thirst again. So why are you dry? You've got away from the well. There's living water available for you today. You'll find grass in your desert. Place. I'm talking about fertile grass. Hmm. Listen. A couple years ago, I got tired of using a service to treat my lawn, so I'm going to do it myself. That's a blessing. Uh, you got them spreaders, you put that junk in there, and you're out there walking around, and then you hit a root, and the thing stops and dumps more right there, so then everything right there dies. You don't have, you got desert grass, not green grass, huh? And you do all this, and no matter what you put down, you still get crab grass, you still get them African violet purple things growing up, you get all these weeds, you get all this stuff and everything. Miss Nett and I was walking through the neighborhood, and we noticed about eight or ten houses, their lawns look perfect, thick and full and green and beautiful, and I looked at mine, and mine looked imperfect, and I'm being nice. We notice these lawns always had this same little tag on there. And here's a, a plug for them. AA Lawn Care. Try them out. Tell them I sent you. All right? So we called them. We'll mowed the grass on Friday. My yard looks beautiful. It's our second year using them. My, we, I just looked back and said, wow. He said, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about when you get the right stuff and the right ingredients come together. Your lawn can look beautiful. When you mix faith and the grace of Jesus together, your desert will start looking beautiful. Huh? You'll not find any weeds. Uh, you'll not find anything that hurts or harms. What you'll find is a pleasant place with the Lord. Some of you are a little dry this morning. You need a little Jesus in your life. Say, preacher, I'm saved. Wonderful. Well, you need to get back to the well. You're not too. You're not faring too well this morning. You're looking a little withered. We went to a restaurant last night. Yesterday evening, Miss Sydney wanted Mexican. Well, usually that's Chewy's to me because I love that jalapeno lime dip. Man, I'll eat my weight in it. She said, "I want Mexican, but not Chewy's." Ugh. Well, Acapulco's good. And what's the other one in town's pretty good. But Miss Nett said, hey, how about that one we've seen from the river? You know, when we're over there, <clears throat> Montgomery Inn. Uh, I, I ought to get paid for all these plugs. You know what I'm saying? There's a place on the river called Cancun. So, all right, let's go to Cancun. So, well, we finally got down there. Walked in. Used to be uh, Don Pablo's. 
And so, uh, and they haven't changed the decor. It still looks like Don Pablo's inside. But we're sitting there waiting on our food again. Boy, food came out quick. But we're sitting there, and it said, we're sitting underneath a dead plant. I looked up right up above our booth. There's a, a plant holder. And that plant's 400 years old and had never had water. It was all droop. I mean, it's dry. I mean, if, if, if Miss Sydney would have sat in a pew too hard, half that plant would have crumbled and fell on her. That's what some of y'all look like this morning. Uh, once you bloomed and planted and was praise unto God what he's done in your life but today you've come in dry and withered and if somebody bumps you too hard you're going to crumble right here in the pew huh you just need to get back to Jesus huh just trying to help you this morning you can find grass in your desert place how do you do that well seeking to meet with Jesus but also submerging in his teaching look what it said in verse 34 and Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, they're in the desert. It's hot. And Jesus is preaching that and he's long-winded. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Huh? Sure. Didn't bother them. They'd ran afoot to get there. And they weren't in a hurry to leave. And they submerged themselves in his teaching. Uh, 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 no man ever spoke like Jesus spoke. Uh, and when he began to teach them the things concerning the, uh, the glory of God, concerning himself and concerning how their lives could be better, uh, they were sitting on the edge of their seat. Uh, they were hanging on every word. Uh, everything was precious. Uh, say, what are you talking about, preacher? They couldn't get enough of him. Uh, and too many of God's people can't get enough of the world. And while you come to church, your mind's not on what Jesus is saying. Your mind's on what's going on out there. Some of you, it is absolutely driving you nuts. You want to check your phone to see how many likes you got. Hmm? But Bob, some of them might even slip them out of coat pockets. Uh, because that means more to you than the favor of God. I'd rather him like me than the whole world. Mm. I'd rather have his approval. Mm. But see, some of you, you you're not submerged. Mm. You know what submerged means? All the way in. Some of you got your toes in. Got your ankles in, you just need to get all the way in. Submerge into what he's a doing. Huh? Choir sang that song, I know my name's there. You should kick the walls out of this building. You just sat there. Big deal. It is a big deal. Because if your name's not written there, you're going to hell. That's a pretty big deal. Glad my name's in, in heaven. Uh, they just submerged into his teaching. They were seeking to meet Jesus. You'll find grass in your desert by submitting to his commands. Again, look in verse 39. I alluded to it a moment ago. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the grass, and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and fifties. Uh, when the Lord told them to do something, they just did it. Uh, hey, uh, today he says, I got water for you. I got life for you. I got joy for you. I got peace for you. But you got to come and get it. And friend, if you don't come and get it, you're just going to be dry. All you're going to be able to say is, I went to church. Well, here's the question I have for you. Did you have church? Hmm? They found grass in their desert. Can I say this? This is my last point. I've got a couple of little thoughts afterward, but this is my last point right here. That is time for you to smile. Kind of feel like a desert place in here. How hot is it? 71. Lord have mercy, it's hot in here. Whew. This is transitional things where it's a little cool in the morning when you get all these people in here. It's hot in here. Huh? Somebody open the window. That's what we used to do in the country. What do you do if you're going to find grass in your desert place? You've got to learn to stomach what he feeds you. Look at verse 41. 
And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes were uh, divided he among them all, and they did all eat and were filled. Now, I'm not going to add to the word of God, but I believe they was probably thankful they got it. Could I say, if you're going to find grass in your desert, you've got to stomach what the Lord puts on your plate. What well, if they didn't like fish? What well, if they were beef eaters? They either ate it or they left as dry as they came. Hmm? Brother Ray, I don't want God to lead me down a path that's crooked and a path that's got thorns and a path that's got heartaches and a path that's, you know, I want that safe path. I want that no heartache path. I want that path where everything is wonderful. Well, every now and then God lets you have a path like that, but sometimes you've got to go through the valley to appreciate how good he is. We wouldn't know about this grass had they not been in that desert place. Hmm? You know why the 23rd Psalm says he leads me beside the still waters? Because sheep don't drink from troubled waters. And when you're troubled, it's hard to drink. But my dear friends, if you just keep following the shepherd, he'll take you to them still waters. You've got a stomach where he takes you, what he's doing in your life. Say, preacher, I've got it real hard. No, the way of a transgressor is hard. Hmm? Huh? Talk to somebody who's a, a drunkard and can't give up the habit and they spend every dime they got on booze and then uh, uh, add to that when they die they're going to go to hell. Now, that's a hard life. I think God's been good to you. So preacher, you just don't know what I've been through but I know what Jesus went through on the cross and he endured a whole lot more than we're going through so you don't have to go through it. So preacher, life has not treated me fair. I get it. But Jesus has been more than fair to you. You've got to learn to stomach whatever path he puts you on, whatever he puts on your plate. Hmm. Nothing absolutely gets all over me more than these parents that say, well, I'm going to fix dinner, but I've got to go up to Wendy's and get some chicken nuggets for my kid because that's all he eats. I guarantee you, if you let him get, get good and hungry, he'll eat whatever you put in front of him. Peanut butter and crackers looks pretty good when you're hungry. Hmm? Uh, you know what you're doing? You're enabling them. You're letting them run the household. And so when they get up about 15 and they tell you to go pound salt, guess what? There's nothing you're going to do with them then because you're the one that caused it. Hmm? That's not in the message. just thought I'd help you there. But how do you think the Lord looks at us when He puts something in our lives and we're praying for Him to remove it and we're telling Him to go pound salt? And He's telling us, no, you need to be the salt and the light. And you'll only do that when you go down the paths that I t I've, I've laid out for you. And when you eat what I put on your plate, others will see how good I am in your life. Hmm. Nowhere in this text, Miss Brittany, do I see anybody complaining about the fish. I was glad to get it. And I'm here to tell you, when we just stomach what the Lord's doing, I, I've done read the book, he does all things well. He doesn't make a, 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 any mistakes. He, there's no accidents or chances. Friend, he's designed something to get glory out of your life. So quit praying that God will remove it and ask Him to give you grace to get through it. Amen. See, if you seek the Lord and submerge into His teaching and submit to His commands and stomach whatever path He puts you on or whatever He puts on your plate, you'll leave full. That's what they did. You'll leave fresh. They, a lot of them came from a long ways. They got exactly what they needed to get home. And when you do those things, you'll get exactly what you need to get home. And you'll go out in a blaze of glory, friend. Can I say this? Uh, you'll leave with a fond tale to tell. 
I had no idea if she was going to sing that song. Really didn't. I, the only time I heard that song, we was driving back from uh, South Carolina and uh, was watching the broadcast. Uh, uh, I'd been down there and, and we was coming back and we put on the broadcast and, and she's singing that song and I didn't like it. I told him that. I said, I don't like that song. Then I come find out, Brother Mike gave it to her to learn. <laughs> he was preaching that night. I need to tell him, Brother Mike, I didn't like that song. I really couldn't hear it real good watching driving down the road and running people off the road while I'm watching the broadcast, you know what I'm saying? But today I listened to it, and it's about that fella as an old man now telling a tale of when he gave his lunch. I just don't think I like where there's plenty of fish. Reminds me of that Bush beer commercial where they crack it open. Psst, that's what I don't like about it worldly is what I don't like about it I'm not going to look at Miss Brittany but I think her face is about as red as her skirt right now okay but if we will put those things into practice somewhere down the road we'll have a fond tale to tell we'll have something to tell somebody say well, hey, there was a time I, I had a dry spot in my life didn't know if I was going to make it I just cast my affections on things above, began to seek the Lord, began to really get into His Word, and began to uh, uh, just accept what lot He's placed in my life. And what I found in that desert place was a nice place where I could worship Him, a nice green place that I could feed upon the things of God. And even though I went out empty, I came back full. It's the opposite of what Naomi said. But see, if you don't put into practice and you don't let Jesus put green grass in your desert place you'll end up beat just worn out where some of you look today bruised preacher you don't know what somebody said about me you don't know what somebody did to me you, don't know. you know what all that is your whole focus is on you you put your focus on him, it don't matter what people say about you. You also leave bitter. Some of you may be bitter today. This is the last time you just had a happy day. This is the last time the joy of the Lord was your strength. Well, we pulled out of the driveway, I told Miss and I said, them weathermen light again, they're in a cloud in the sky. And I said, I, literally, there's not a cloud in the sky. I said, this is a beautiful day. I already knew Miss Renee was sick, wasn't going to be here. Knew some others were sick, weren't going to be here. And you know what? I determined I was going to come worship the Lord regardless. He gave us a beautiful day. I just come in excited, looking forward to seeing y'all. And some of you come in like Eeyore. Thanks for noticing. Uh -oh. I used that illustration one time. Miss Pam bought me an Eeyore. Where you at, Miss Pam? Oh, you're over there. She bought me an Eeyore. You pull his tail off and he talks. My dog wants it so bad I have to hide it. He's wanting to end Eeyore's bad days. That's how some of you came in. I get it. Life's hard. I get it. You face troubles and trials. But can I help you something? Jesus is always wonderful. Hmm. I'm going to go home and enjoy a good lunch, enjoy the goodness of the Lord, because i got to come to church, worship Him, sing about Him. His worth coming here in the first song Brother Clinton picked out. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. I'm thinking he has no idea when I'm preaching at home, but he's going to lead somebody to some green grass today. I was having a time. Then Brittany sang that song I thought I didn't like. I'm saying, Lord, have mercy. That's what I'm preaching on. God's good. Amen. So I wonder this morning, how long has it been since you got out of your desert place, got to sit in some green grass at the foot of Jesus for a while? Well, today he beckons you. He says, come on. I'm right where you left me. Come on. Huh? Can I help you with something? I'll quit right here. Fresh water is a whole lot better than drinking water from a bitter pool. Hey. 
why don't you come and get a good drink this morning? Maybe come in and you're just full. You ought to get this altar and thank you. Because so many aren't. Just come and say, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. I'm in green pastures. Ought to be in a desert, but I'm in green pastures. You ought to be a cactus, but you're a rose this morning. I mean, there's just so much to thank him for. You ought to, you ought to let him know. You appreciate the bread and fish. What he's put on your plate. I'm telling you one thing. He's a good God. And he'll help you in your deserts if you let him. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song, please, my brother. So they're picking out a song. Some are coming. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you this morning. Thank you for green pastures. Thank you for bread and fish. Or whatever you put on our plate, it's good because it comes from your hand. It has a purpose designed behind it. Lord, we bless you for it. Now, Lord, I didn't preach a salvation message, but there may be somebody here unsaved, and God, you've revealed that to them today. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. They just come give the Lord their life. Lord, I pray for that child of God that's in a desert place. Lord, I pray they'd look and find you and find green pastures in their desert place. Lord, maybe somebody here is going through something specific, needs some help. Lord, I pray they'd come get some help. Maybe somebody just needs a cool drink of water. God, I pray they'd come and get it. God, I have your way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. Help your people to not leave dry and arid, but to leave refreshed and full of the goodness of God. Have your will and way now. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.